Hey everyone, this is Barrow here again, and this time I have a deck profile for an Asha slash Marjika build, and this one is a revised version of the original popular build for this deck before the Tri-3 booster. Alright, so moving on to the deck list, we'll start off with the Grade 3s, and obviously we run the playset of Summer's Height, Flower Maiden Marjika. She has two abilities. Her first one is Auto Vanguard Circle once per turn GB1 when your rear guard with the Bloom ability is chosen by your opponent's card effect. You may Soul Blast one and if you do, draw a card. Now her second ability is what is the real reason why should we run her. It's Bloom, Auto, Vanguard, or Rear Guard Circle. When your other Summer's Height Flyer Maiden Marjika is placed on Rear Guard Circle, choose one of your other units. Until end of turn, it gets plus 3,000 power, and if that unit is named Sunwheel Maiden Ronnie, it gets Auto, Rear Guard Circle. When this unit attack hits a Vanguard, draw a card and Soul Charge 1. Now on to the other Grade 3s. We do run four Ashas, however, we run two copies of Ranunculus' Searing Heart Asha and two copies of the original Ranunculus Flower Maiden Asha. The reason why is Searing Heart is a bit difficult to obtain, and I was only able to get two, but from my experience, two of each works just as well. So we'll start with the original, if you're not familiar with it. Her, she has two abilities, and her first one is... Uh, less commonly used. It's continuous, vanguard circle, GB2. All of your unit gets the, the ability of continuous, vanguard, or rearguard circle during your turn. If you have another unit with the same card name as this unit, this gets plus 5,000 power. Basically what this translates into is all your units on the field. If you have another unit with the same card name as it, basically you have copies on the field, they each get plus 5,000 power. Now her second ability is Auto Vanguard Circle. During your turn, when you stride on top of Asha, you may Counter Blast 1, and if you do, choose one of your rear guards. You search your deck for up to one copy of that card, superior call it to rear, and then that unit gets plus 2,000 power until end of turn. Now Searing Heart is similar in that when you stride over her, you can clone a card. However, for, by sacrifice, she doesn't give the unit plus 2k in exchange, the unit gets the ability to, to, to boost, but you also have to Soul Blast one as part of the cost. Asha's other two abilities play off one another. The first one is Bloom Auto Vanguard GB2. When your other unit with the same card name as this unit is placed on rear, you counter charge one and soul charge one. The other one is Auto Vanguard at the end of each turn. Choose a card from your hand and you may call it to rear. The great thing about this effect is that it allows you to set up for your upcoming stride turn without leaving a unit on the board for the opponent to either attack, lock, or even retire it. Alright, so moving on to grade twos, we have four copies of Sunwheel Maiden Ronnie. And her abilities are Bloom Auto Rearguard Circle GB1. When your other unit with Ronnie and its name is placed on rear, choose up to a total of five of your Ronnies or Marjikas on rearguard circle, and until end of turn, they get the continuous ability of rearguard circle. This unit gets plus 1,000 for each of your units with the Bloom ability. Now, since Ronnie gives units an ability, that means the more Ronnies that you bring out, the power stacks on top of them. And her second ability is continuous, rearguard, and in the deck, this card is also regarded as Summer's Height Flower Maiden Marjika. Now this one is very important because as I mentioned before, Marjika, her effect that gives a unit 3k requires you to bring out a copy of Marjika onto the board. But since Ronnie is also treated as Marjika, whenever you bring her out, if Marjika is already on the board, you trigger the plus 3k, and if you put that power onto the Ronnie, that fulfills the requirement uh, for the unit to get the ability that if it hits the Vanguard, you draw a card and Soul Charge one. And just like with Ronnie, with the power that if you can Superior Call more, you'll keep stacking the power, the same is for Marjika. With more Ronnies or Marjikas that you bring out, you trigger the 3k, and with each 3k that you give a unit, 
if it's a Ronnie, that's each additional effect of on hit, draw a card, soul charge one. All right, now on to the next grade two. It's Ideal Maiden in Thuria and four copies of her. And what she does is when you bring her out onto the rear guard circle, you can have her come out uh, as a unit with the same name as another unit that you already have on the rear. So for example, if you already have a Ronnie in play, when you bring out Thuria, you can have Thuria come out as a copy of Ronnie. And since Ronnie has Marjika in its name, Thuria will also be given the name of Marjika. So that means when you bring out Ronnie, I mean Thuria, and you have a Ronnie in play, and you also have Marjika in play, Thuria is going to trigger not only the Ronnie's ability of giving units plus 1k, but it can also trigger Marjika's effect of giving a Ronnie 3k and the on hit ability. You, so you can either give it to the Ronnie or you can give it to the Thuria and it'll still work. Now the second ability of Thuria is at the beginning of your main phase, you may put a copy of a card that has the same name as Thuria from your drop zone into the deck and if you do, bounce Thuria back to your hand. This makes it so that you can reuse Thuria and trigger the Bloom abilities and it also helps put any cards back into the deck so you can superior call them later. And of course both of these abilities are GB1. And lastly for the grade 2's I run 4 copies of Blossoming Maiden Sela. And basically she's the 10k vanilla. I don't run the I don't run Noel, the grade 2 that lets you attack from the back row because just like with Searing Heart Asha, she is hard to obtain right now. And besides, the benefits of having a 10k vanilla is it helps deter people from wanting to rush you and put you at more damage. Because say if you went first and you ride onto Sela, commonly your opponent's grade 2 ride is going to be a 9k. So unless they bring out a stronger booster than, than their uh, forerunner, you can make you can basically ditch a 10k from your hand and make it a no pass which saves you an extra damage and your opponent can't field a bunch of great twos on the board unless they also bring out a bunch of boosters and if they do happen to bring out a lot of boosters what is handy is that that means their hand size is going to be relatively low and by the time you have Marjika and Ronnie's out and you have the uh, on hit abilities working you can it can make the attacks hit easier, which means you'll be able to draw your cards and get more resources back. All right, now on to the grade ones. I have four copies of Valkyrie, Valkyrie of Reclamation Padmini, and she's pretty much the stride fodder. Since this is an Asha deck, you do need to be able to stride every turn when possible. Next is four perfect guards. And I choose to run the Unflipping Perfect Guard, uh, Maiden of Passion Flower. I run the Unflipping one mostly because um, because of the G Zone. This deck does counter blast very often, and being able to unflip some damage outside of healing damage off comes in really handy. And lastly, I run four copies of Faith Maiden Odette, and her abilities are. Bloom Auto Rear Guard Circle. When another unit with the same name as her is placed on rear, if you have a Grade 3 or Greater Vanguard, you can choose up to two of your units and they get plus 4,000 power until end of turn. And her second ability is Auto Rear Guard GB1. At the beginning of your main phase, you can choose a normal unit from your drop zone and put it to the bottom of your deck. And if you do, you can bounce all that back to your hand. So she works similarly to Thuria in that they both bounce to your hand. However, unlike Thuria where you have to shuffle your deck afterwards, for Odette the card stays at the bottom of your deck. So that means you don't have to worry about, uh, ch uh, for those who care about percentages, you're not affecting the rate at which you can drive check into a trigger because 
you you know for sure that the card at the bottom is a normal unit so it doesn't affect the ratio at which you can check triggers and another thing is that unlike Thuria Odette does not require you to put a copy of a herself back into deck it could be any normal unit so you have more you have more room to be flexible uh, however both Odette and Thuria do require you to be on a Renekdalus Vanguard in order to be able to bounce them so you either have to be on on either of the Asha Grade Threes or one of the Asha Strides if you wish to be able to use their bouncing ability. Now, before the, in the older build, uh, it was common to run Katrina as the Grade One because for Katrina, she gives when another copy of her is placed on rear, she gives five, she gives four K to a to, up to a total of five Katrinas on your rears. So compared to Odette, she gives off more power overall. However, the benefit of Odette is that you don't have you're not required to give power to the to the Odettes. You can give power to something like your Vanguard or a rear guard of a different name. So so Odette does offer a lot more flexibility. And she also does not require you to be on a Ranunculus Vanguard in order to give that power off. That was one of the downsides of the older build. Say if you had to ride on top of Marjika, unless you're striding one of the Asha strides, it you'll be you'll be heavily handicapped because most of your rearguard effects only work when you're on an Asha Vanguard. But since Odek doesn't care what kind of Vanguard you're on, as long as you're grade three and higher to give the power. Uh, I choose to run her over Katrina. Now for the trigger lineup, it's pretty standard. It might be a bit different compared to other builds, but for me, I choose to run eight stand triggers, four, uh, four Cosm Cosmos Pixie Lisbeths, and four Maiden of Daybreak. And I run four critical triggers, basically Flower Garden Maiden Millis, and lastly, four heal triggers. So the reason why I don't go for the 12 stand build is because one, because it's a popular build, last I checked, and it it's more helpful to run crits because if the opponent assumes that you're running a 12 stand deck, they'll just no guard your vanguard and pay attention to only guarding against Marshka and Ronnie's. But if you do run the crits, that means that when they no guard your vanguard, you can surprise them with some critical triggers and possibly get you closer to or actually winning you the game, depending on the situation. Now the four heals are pretty obvious because uh, you got to be able to heal your damage and also G guard. Now the Maiden of Daybreak's ability is auto gb1 when it's placed onto rear guard circle you can put her back into the deck and give two units that have the same name plus 5000 power until end of turn and for Elizabeth's ability she's bloom auto uh, rear guard circle gb1 when your other Elizabeth is placed onto rear guard circle you can choose up to five of your units with Elizabeth in its name and they get the act ability of rearguard circle GB1. Choose a normal unit in your drop zone, and you can return up to four units that share the same name as that chosen unit, and shuffle it back in your, into your deck along with Lisbeth. And if you do, draw a card. So the nice thing is that you don't have to return any of the cards that you any cards in the drop zone back in the deck. All you have to do is just choose a normal unit and you can return zero and the only card that you would return is just Elizabeth and you just draw a card. So basically what you're doing is putting a stand trigger back in your deck and then drawing a new card as a replacement. So at worst you're just cycling the Elizabeth from your hands in order to draw new cards and at best you're triggering 
you're triggering a lot of bloom abilities when you pair her up with the starter that I run. And the starter that I'm running is two copies of Augury Maiden Ida. Now she is a forerunner and her first ability is an act rearguard circle GB1. You counterblast one and put this unit into your soul. And if you do, you choose any unit in your drop zone and put it to the bottom of your deck. So you can even put back your triggers back in your deck at the cost of counterblast one and putting her into soul. However, if the unit that you put back into the deck has the bloom ability, you draw a card. So you are able to replace Ida if you do return a bloom. And since Lisbeth has a is a trigger with a bloom ability, you ideally you could just put any Lisbeths that end up in your drop zone back into your deck, and you still get to draw a card. So it's a win-win. Now her second ability is what makes this deck uh, much better compared to the old old build, and it's act rest this unit and choose two of your units for the rest of this turn. The two units that you chose will share each other's names. So before I mentioned that in the old build for Asha and Marjika, that riding into Marjika was detrimental to the deck because a lot of the effects like Katrina or Thuria, those required you to be on a Ranunculus Vanguard in order for their effects to go off. However, since we've solved the issue of Katrina by replacing her with Odette, in addition to running Ida, not only are not only is riding Marjika not as bad anymore, but going first can also uh, reap some benefits compared to before, where uh, the main goal was to go onto Asha Grade Three, stride into Verano. And using the old forerunner, uh, Elmi, just on your first stride turn, just bring out a bunch of Ronnies and Marjikas and hope for the best on that one turn. But now, let's go, let's look at this one by one. So, let's grab these cards. So, what you can do now if you go first and you rode into Marjika, is that if you have Odette, you call Odette and use Ida's skill to rest her and give both Odette and Marjika each other's names. And then you call Ronnie from your hand to rearguard. It can be in front of Odette, to the side, but basically when you bring out Ronnie, you can still trigger Marjika's effect and give Ronnie 3k and the on hit, but you're also going to be triggering Odette's ability, which is going to be giving two units 4k. So what you can do here is give the one 4k to Ronnie and the other 4k to Marjika. So now your rearguard column is 7 plus 9, 16 plus the 3k, so it's 19 plus the 4k. So now this column here is 23, and it has the on-hit ability of when it hits the Vanguard, you draw a card and Soul Charge one, and your Vanguard got an additional 4k, so it's now 15k. And since you went first, you're prob you probably rode into your grade 3 before the opponent. And unless your opponent's running an 11k Vanguard, when you attack with your Marjika, you're still going to be doing the same... Uh, you're still going to be attacking for the same amount of guard uh, if compared to if you had Ida still standing and boosting. So now, now your Vanguard is not in not a one card two to pass for your opponent. It's going to be as if it were boosted. And then your opponent still has to worry about your rear guard column attacking and having that on hit pressure of you drawing an additional card. Now this gets even better if you had two Ronnies in your hand because now what you could do is call, just like before have Odette and Marjika on board rest Ida have these two share names call one Ronnie and then have Marjika give the 3k to the Ronnie have Odette go off 
giving 4K to Ronnie and Marjika. Then call a second Ronnie. Marjika gives 3K to Ronnie. And then all that goes off. You can give 4K to the new Ronnie. And you can give the other 4K to either the Vanguard or just even pump up the Ronnie even more. So say if you pumped up the Ronnie. Let's use some dice here for power. Let's see. So this is assuming that you gave each Ronnie the on-hit ability, and from Odette, you gave one, one uh, 4K to Ronnie, two of them to the other Ronnie, and one of them to Marjika. So now you have two rear guard columns that have an on-hit ability of you drawing a card, and this, and this Ronnie here is going to be swinging for 20k, this one's going to be swinging for 23, so again, if you rode first, your opponent is on a 9k Vanguard or a 10k Vanguard, and if they want to prevent you from drawing cards, they'll have to ditch at minimum two cards to guard both the rears, and you can attack with your Vanguard, and if you do trigger any of the stand triggers, that means you'll re-stand Ronnie's, swing in again, if they hit, you draw even more cards. So this is an example of why I prefer to run this variant of the Maj Majika Asha build compared to the older variant. Because for cards like Odet and Ida, they are not restricted by GB1, nor are they required for you to have a Renunclus Vanguard in order to activate their abilities. So you can make full use of them early game. Moving on to the G zone, it's not too different compared to the old variant. There's a few new cards in here. So for me, I run three copies of Flower Princess of Perpetual Summer Verano, three copies of Dream Spinning Ranunculus Asha, two copies of Ranunculus and Glorious Bloom Asha, one copy of Flower Princess of Spring's Beginning, Primavera, and two copies of the new card, Flower Princess of Beautiful Winter, Inverno, and the last stride is Seabreeze, for obvious reasons. And for the G-Guardians, there are four G-Guardians. The first two are Sacred Tree Dragon, Rain Breath Dragon, and then one of the new cards, Passion Flower Princess Marlena, and lastly, Dismal, because just like for Sea Breeze, we just gotta have the Dismal. So, I'll explain each of the G, each of the Stride units and G Guardians uh, real quick. So let's start with Verano and Dream Spinning Asha. If you had to be the first person to Stride, these would be the unit that you would stride into. So depending on the situation, you go into Dream Spinning or you go into Verano, but we'll begin with Dream Spinning. Her ability is Act uh, once per turn. You flip a copy of her from your G-Zone face up, and then she gets the Act ability of choose one of your rear guards. And if you have two or more units in the rear guard circles that have the same name as that unit, all of your units in the front row get plus 5,000 power. Now, say if you don't have Thuria's and you don't really have any cards in your hand that share each other's names. Since we're running Ida here, all you have to do is just choose any of your rear, uh, any of a uh, unit from your hand and call it to rearguard circle. And with Ida's skill, you can rest her and have Ida herself share the same name as the card you just played. That way, you can activate Asha's effect, choose your choose your rear guard, and then both since both your rear and Ida have the same names, that means you fulfill the requirement and your front row gets plus five thousand power. So, this is an easy solution to if you want to conserve your hand or you don't really have many units that can attack, but you still want to be able to try to get in some either make your opponent guard early or try to get in that one extra damage. Now, Asha does have a second ability, but this requires you to basically be at GB2. And, and what it is is 
you can copy a card in your rearguard circle and the unit that you bring out from your deck gets plus 2,000 power. So basically her, the rest of her effect is similar to the original Asha in that you clone and you get plus 2 decay. So next is Verano and what her effect is is when she's placed onto the Vanguard circle you Soul Blast 1, flip a card from your G-Zone face up, and it doesn't have to be Verano. However, her effect does require you to, in order to make use of her effect, you, de you do need to have a Verano face up. So, as a first stride, you would flip up Verano, and then the rest of her cost is you have to put a card from your hand and in the drop zone back into the deck. And after that, you can activate her. You can use her effect, which is Superior call up to two cards from your hand onto the rear guard circle, and then choose a number of your rear guards equal to how many face up Veranos you have in the G zone, and then you clone them. So, for example, I superior call the Ronnie, and since Ronnie's also a Marjica, I can actually superior call Marjica from my deck. Now, Veranos, uh, the great thing about Verano is that any cards that come out because of her. Any cards that she actually clones, the cards that come out have the ability to boost. So right here, right here, we can actually attack with Ronnie, boosted by the Marjika, and this will actually be a 20k column. Next we have Renunculus and Glorious Blue Masha, and her effect is act once per turn GB2 at the cost of Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, and flipping a card in your G zone face up. If you have a unit with if you have a heart card with Renunculus in its name, you can choose one of your units and search your deck for up to one card with the same name as that unit that you chose and you call it to Rearguard Circle. So you can even choose something as your Vanguard and then you clone basically the heart. Then you choose up to four of your units with the same card name as that unit and they get plus 5,000 power for each Dream Spending Asha you have face up in the G zone. Next, if you have a unit with the same card name as this unit, the Vanguard, on your rearguard circle, your Vanguard here will get plus one critical. So, one very important thing about Glorious is that you actually don't need a Renunculus Heart to get that extra crit. Because the way it's worded in the text, the, the part where you can get an extra crit is a separate sentence from the rest of the text that requires you to have a heart with Renunculus in its name. So for this deck, you can actually have Marjik as your heart. You can go into Glorious. You will not be able to clone anything, but as long as you have another unit that's also Marjika on the rear, your Vanguard can still get the plus one crit. So that's nice because since Ronnie is also named Marjika, you, you basically have a total of eight cards, or technically seven since one of them's in the heart, seven cards that you can just bring out to the rear and that'd be an easy way to get plus one crit. Another easy way to get the additional crit is because we're running the uh, the starter item, it can work the same way as I mentioned for Dream Spinning Asha where you can just rest her and just have the Vanguard here share the same name as anything on the board, including Ida, and that already fills the crit requirement. And of course, you can also just bring out Thuria and have Thuria come into play as a name of the Vanguard. So very easy to get that additional crit. Moving on, we have Primavera here, who is one of the finishers of this deck. Her ability is Auto Vanguard Circle. When she attacks the Vanguard, you Counter Blast 3, choose 5 normal units from your drop zone, put them on top of your deck, and you discard 1 card from your hand. Then you choose 2 of your rear guards, and you search your deck for up to two copies of each of the rear guards that you chose and you superior call them onto the rear guard circle. So basically, let's say if we had Thuria and Marjika out and when Primavera attacks, we would 
pay the cost and then choose these two units and then we bring out two copies of Marjica and two copies of Thuria onto the board which means we get uh, we pretty much get two more attacks after the Vanguard swing. Now it's important that for a cost that you do, you do it in the right order because you have to choose the five normal units before you discard. So you can't use the card that you discard as the one that you put back. So you need to make sure that you're, you actually have the right number of cards in your drop zone and then you're also putting back the right cards you'll probably need to bring back out. Because late in the game, you'll probably be very through, you'll probably thin out your deck of a lot of your copies. So basically what Primavera will help you do is put back any of the copies that you need from drop zone back in the deck and then you can just bring them out again and attack with them. Another important thing about Bloom is when you have multiple units come into play at the same time. So, for example, let's have Primavera use its effect to bring out copies of Odette and Thuria. So if we bring out two Odettes and a Thuria and have Thuria come into play as another Odette, what happens here is the Odette that's about to be retired will still have its auto ability triggered for each Odette that came into play. So we have one, two, three. So we have three Odette triggers from here. Then these two Odettes are going to have their auto abilities trigger for each other Odette that came into play at the same time as her. So this one will respond to these two, and this one will respond to these two. So that would mean we had seven Odette triggers go off, so we can distribute the 4K seven times. So the last stride I'll go over is Inverno, and she's similar to Primavera with her first effect, and that Inverno is act once per turn Soul Blast 1, and you choose up to five cards in total from your rear guard or your drop zone, and you shuffle them back into your deck. Then you counter charge one and soul charge one. So just like with Primavera, she uh, Inverno puts cards back into the deck, and you're able to counter charge and soul charge. And that counter charge comes in handy because it helps uh, use her second effect an additional time. And her second effect is auto vanguard GB2. When it when a unit is called to your rearguard circle, you can counter blast one and discard a card. And then choose one of your rear guards with the bloom ability and search your deck for up to two copies of that card and add it to your hand. Now, I did mention before that you can actually use it an additional time. Basically, in Vernal's second effect, there is no once per turn clause. So as long as you have counter blasts, you can actually keep repeating her effect while you call more units to the rear. So, for example, let's say if we called a Marjiga to the rearguard circle. We would activate Inverno's skill and search for either, we can actually search for Marjiga and Arani and add them to her hand. Then we can actually call Marjiga again, use Inverno's effect, ditch a card, could even ditch the Arani, search for two more, add them to your hand, and you could actually go through all eight Marjikas and Ronis from your deck and then the end result will be you would have Ronnie's here with insane numbers of power as well as an insane number of on-hit effects. So that's just one example of how you can uh, how you can pr pressure the opponent into pretty much they're going to be perfect guarding the rears unless they have a lot of G guards in their hand or alternative methods of guarding high power numbers. And you actually thin out your deck through all your normal units and then that would mean you have a higher uh, higher chance of triggering uh, probably stands or crits when you swing up your Inverno. So again that's just one example of what you can do with Inverno. There's a more common trick you can do. Um, I believe so. I believe that uh, most people would use the combo with Noel and Lisbeth but since I don't have Noel's we can still use the combo with Odette actually. So basically we would have Odette and Lisbeth and Ida still on the board and what we can do with Ida is we would use her effect to have Odette and Lisbeth share the same names. And since we called out Lisbeth we probably 
use Inferno's effect to grab more Elizabeths from the deck. And what we do here is we call out Elizabeth. Elizabeth will trigger the other one's skill, giving all Elizabeths the ability of being able to be shoved back into the deck and you draw a replacement card. But since Odette shares the name of Elizabeth, calling out Elizabeth will trigger Odette's effect and you can get 4k to probably Odette and 4k to the Vanguard. Then you can use Elizabeth's effect, shove her back in the deck, draw a new card. And then uh, since we used Inverno, we should have another Elizabeth in hand. We call it back out, trigger Elizabeth's effect, trigger uh, Odette's effect, giving power again, and then we can trigger Inverno's effect, counterblast one, ditch, search the deck for more Elizabeths, add them to hand, and then we basically rinse and repeat. We shove the Elizabeths back in, draw a different card, shove the Elizabeths back in, draw a different card. We can keep doing this for as long as we have counterblast, and we can basically put pretty much go far enough to where all the Elizabeths are back into the deck, we draw replacement cards, probably different cards that can actually attack. And we also have an Odette here that probably gained a lot of power and a Vanguard or maybe another rear guard here that also gained a lot of power because of the Odette. Now, one very important thing is that although both Odette and Elizabeth have the Bloom abilities, their Bloom abilities actually work differently. Odette's ability can activate as long as another card that shares her name comes out onto Rearguard Circle. However, Elizabeth requires you to actually call out Elizabeth to the Rearguard Circle. So even if you call out Odette from your hand to Rear and Elizabeth has Odette in its name, it won't trigger Elizabeth's effect because uh, Elizabeth has a different requirement compared to Odette. Alright, and the last stride was Seabreeze, but there's really no reason to go over Sea Breeze since you should all already know how that works. Now as for the G Guardians, one Dismal to be able to protect the rear guards. And then one Marlena. Marlena ha has an ability where she can get 15k more guard. And there's two ways to meet the requirement to get that extra guard. The first one is to have two Renunculus units on the board. And the other one is just having four units that share the same name. So I can either have two Ashas on the board, or I can have like two Marjikas and two Ronnies on the board as well, and that'll also still meet the requirement. I only run one because the requirement can probably only happen once before um, the bo my board gets reset, whether it's for the opponent attacking the rears and retiring them, or if I switch to a more offensive approach with different units and I don't have four copies out. So one's really all that's needed. And also it's because the space, the amount of space left goes to two Rain Breath Dragons. So for Rain Breath Dragon, its ability is when you place on a guard circle, you can superior call a card from your hand onto the rear guard circle. And if you do, uh, Rain Breath gets plus 5k extra guard. In addition, the card you bring out to Rearguard Circle has the resist ability, so it can't be targeted by your opponent's card effects. Now, the, the reason why Rain Breath is such a great G-Guard is because of the ability to, to superior call on the opponent's turn. So, for example, let's say I had an Asha Vanguard and I had two Odettes on the board, or even two Marjikas on the board. So what we can do here is guard with the Rain Breath Dragon and then Superior Call, for example, Thuria from my hand onto Rear Guard Circle. So what we can do here is Thuria will come into play as a copy of either Odette or a Marjika. And because a card that shared Odette's name came onto board, and or a card that shared Marjika name came into board, it can trigger their effects to give units plus power. So, for example, if Duria came into play as a Marjika, then each Marja will give 3k to a unit, and you can put 
both of those onto the Vanguard, meaning Asha got plus 6k power until the end of the turn. So that's that's great for defensive plays against opponents that can probably do a lot of multi-attacks, or even just probably uh, attacks that are, are a bit high in power, but you can basically get that use that extra 6k as a buffer to guard against. Same things for Odette. If you have two Odettes out, or even just one, you can bring out Thuria, comes into play as the Odette, Odette goes off, give 4k for each Odette to the Vanguard, and then you can even pump up Thuria as well. So Rain Breath, great addition. I run two of them, so I can you do the I can do the guarding multiple times in case I need to. And it doesn't even have to be Thuria. Let's say you had Marjika's out. You can just G-guard using Ronnie's. And for Odette's, you can G-guard using Odette. Uh, I mean, Superior calling the Ronnie. And for the Odette, Superior calling the Odette's. There's also another card you can use Rain Breath, Rain Breath with. For example, if you don't even have any of these on the board, what you can use Rain Breath to Superior call is Made in a Daybreak. Because when you call her out, you'll also trigger her auto ability and she can be shoved back into the deck. And you can just give your pet banker an extra 5k. So you have a, you have a few good options on how to be very defensive on your opponent's turn. And Rain Breath really helps you uh, really helps you get that defensive off. So Ida here is a great starter for the deck. She's very flexible. As I mentioned before, she's not restricted by which vanguard you're on. So you can use her for different plays in any situation. And she's great when you pair her up with Inverno. Because for Inverno skill that uh, where you counterblast one, the searcher deck for copies, sometimes you might be left with an odd number of cards in your deck. But if you use Ida skill, then the card that you targeted for Inverno's effect would have a second name, so you can always search for that other card from your deck and add it to hand, so that way you, you can make full use of Inverno's skill. Overall, I wouldn't say this deck is easy to pilot. There's a lot of resource management you need to take in consideration. For example, since you're drawing a lot of cards with Ronnie and Marjika, you're also soul charging a lot. So you have to take in consideration of how many cards you have left in your deck so you don't deck out. And you also need to consider which cards ended up in your soul, so you know that for your next turn, you know which cards you have you have access to, to copy and bring out or even add to your hand, depending what you're striding into. My advice to anyone playing Asha, it doesn't have to be this build; it could be a different build, and it's that you really need to get used to how your deck operates during the flow of a game. You need to know which card to go into or search for depending on the situation and you don't want to waste time reading rereading your card effects or thinking what would happen if this happened or that happened you want to be able to intuitively uh, play the deck and the reason why is in tournaments games are always on a time limit and since you're playing neo nectar you're going to be searching through your deck a lot and you're also going to be doing a lot of math on the board and since you're going to be shuffling your deck a lot, depending on who's your opponent, they might request to also cut your deck. And shuffling and cutting do take up only a, probably a few seconds, but with how often you're doing it, it will stack up. And you don't want to waste pretty much the time that you can use to play the game on stuff like searching your deck and just shuffling. Also, for calculating how strong your units get because of uh, card effects or even triggers, my best advice is to get a, a get a good number of dice and also uh, come up with a system that makes the math easier for you to do. For example, let's say I have a bunch of Odette triggers going off and Odette always gives 4k. One, one method you can use is just for the face of the dice. Each, uh, each pip on the dice just rec uh, represents an increment of 4k. So all you have to do is count up what the dice value is and then just multiply it by 4k that'll make it easier for you to do all the math and you don't have to go out of your way and get a bunch of dice and just cover your cards with them and it's also 
helpful for the opponent as well so they know so they know how strong cards are they can also do the math in their heads while you're resolving all your combos and basically the idea is the faster you can play your own deck the the more time you'll be allotted to actually play through the game and be able to go into your second stride your third stride and hopefully finish it off by your fourth stride because if you play it pretty slowly like if you search your deck for a while or even it takes a while for you to get the math right there, there will probably be only enough time for you to do like a second stride before time is called and you don't want to be in that kind of situation so again it's a real good idea to get used to how you play the deck and being being used to doing a lot of quick math and uh, very quick at shuffling your deck while also trying to keep it randomized as best as possible. But once you get all that though, once you get all that figured out, the deck is really fun to play. And depending on depending on the matchup, it could feel real rewarding on being able to outplay the opponent when they think they got you when they think they got your deck figured out but you're able to adjust and just quickly switch up uh, switch up your plays into something that can devastate the opponent. And not only will being able to do all this math real quickly and be able to shuffle real quickly benefit you, this will also benefit the opponent because everyone wants to be able to play a game and nobody wants to sit on the opposite side of someone who is basically just spending a minute or two just searching through your through their deck and putting a lot of dice on the board and basically not letting the opponent get to play as much as well. So it'll be good for you, it'll be good for the opponent to be able to resolve all your effects as fast as possible. That way it means that there's more time for everyone to play and to enjoy the game. Alright, that is it for this deck profile. Sorry it took a while. Hopefully in the next one it'll be significantly shorter. But until then, this is Beryl signing off.